first of all, I wanna say thank you everyone for coming. Feliz a Cinco de Mayo! Hey, what's going on, Ringsiders? This is your host, Boxing's Objective Observer. and Welcome back to Ringside Stories. Feel free to subscribe, thumbs up, and hit that notification bell for the latest here on Ringside Stories. Thanks so much for your support and advance, and welcome to the channel. Dimitri Bivo holds on to his WBA Super World title at light heavyweight, winning a close yet unanimous decision over Saul Canelo Alvarez, moving the Russian's record to 20-0. I will give credit to Canelo for taking up, in my opinion, the toughest challenge at 175 for all of the reasons mentioned in previous videos. Now let's take a closer look at this fight as this is Ringside Stories post-fight analysis, aka the Bivo Canelo breakdown. Five takeaways from Dimitri Bivo versus Saul Canelo Alvarez. Let's get into it. Number one. This is boxing. Es un buen peleador, entra, sale. Yeah, so he's a, he's a really good fighter. He's a fighter that comes in and goes out. I also felt his power, but I think it was a good fight. You know, it was a good victory for him. Seeing you win or lose, that's sport, and that's what happened. If you play the numbers game long enough, you'll eventually take a loss, especially when it comes to boxing. Although a loss can hurt a fighter's stock, it's more about the fashion in which you lose. Canelo is still the undisputed king at super middleweight, who just challenged a legit world champion in his fighting prime, with most of the physical advantages stacked against him, fighting outside his natural weight class. Different weight class. You know, I'm looking for challenges. Uh, challenges in my career that take me out of my comfort zone. So I'm proud and I'm feeling good. I feel like I can come out of this fight with my head held high because I gave the best of me. But even with this loss, Canelo can still choose whoever he wants to fight as he still is boxing's cash cow. One elite level fighter beat another elite level fighter who most likely wins again in an immediate rematch. And thank you. Eddie here, and sorry I broke your plans with Gennady Golovkin, maybe. <laughs> you have a rematch clause. Do you want to do this again? Claro que sí. Claro que sí. Esto no se queda así. Yeah, of course I do. This doesn't end like this. So props to Team Canelo for willing to pursue greatness and taking on this difficult fight against Dimitri Bivo. But since he is still boxing's cash cow, Canelo can still choose whoever he wants to fight. Even outside the Bivo rematch, Team Canelo has many options to explore, many big fights that can be made. Number two, stylistic nightmare. Dimitri Bivo proved how Canelo is still bothered by good movers with solid boxing skills. Even as recent as the Caleb Plant fight, these issues showed up. Sweet Hands just lacked the punching power, lacked the experience at the elite level to trouble Canelo. Also, in his first move up to light heavyweight, Canelo struggled with an aging and passed his best version of Sergei Kovalev before knocking him out in the 11th. Against Kovalev's countrymen, however, on May 7, 2022, Saul Canelo Alvarez had zero answers to Bivol's fast hands, movement, and the ability to adjust in fight. The keys for Dmitry Bivol in this fight were his jab, which is a testament to the Russian's understanding of gauging, manipulating, and creating distance and using his counter hooks. In an attempt to set the pace, and a bit uncharacteristically, Canelo Alvarez started fast in the first quarter of the fight, which regardless of how you scored them, by far were his best rounds in the Bivol Canelo fight. Then after the fourth round, Dimitri Bivol took over, which had Canelo on the back foot against the ropes, frustrated and eventually visibly fatigued in the championship rounds. Stop! Yeah, he's frustrated. Canelo showed great reflexes and defensive moves, but that was in response to Bivol's formidable attacks. Also, the Russian displayed tremendous discipline throughout the fight, unwilling to depart from his icy cool demeanor, sticking to the game plan, unwilling to engage in an unnecessary slugfest. Unfazed by the occasion, unfazed by the pro Canelo crowd during Cinco de Mayo weekend, Bivol proved how boxing experience, self-control, self-belief can get you a long way in boxing. My last fight, I didn't enjoy in the fight because it wasn't the challenge for me I just uh, defend my titles against some guys and everyone bet on me and now I was enjoying the fight and I saw how and I heard uh, a lot of fans was uh, 
yelling, you know, and it uh, motivated me today. And I really enjoyed today the fight. Sticking to the game plan, sticking to a skill set that have historically bothered Saul Canelo Alvarez, which gave Dimitri Bivo this somewhat historical victory. Jim, right now, what a night for him. Dreamed of this night, got the opportunity, and, and becomes a true great tonight, beating the pound for pound number one. Number three, Bivol versus Canelo's facts. All three judges gave the first four rounds to Saul Canelo Alvarez, not only giving the challenger a generous lead, but also forcing Bivo to win the 12th round in order to actually win the fight officially. From that point of view, the official 115-113 score, which is how all three judges scored the fight, is an outstanding feat for the undefeated Bivo, as he went up against not just the pound for pound best fighter in the world, but also all the politics and all the favoritism that is siding with the Mexican superstar. Now, in reality, Dimitri Bivol outboxed, out-hustled, and outclassed Canelo. Keep in mind, Canelo is a fighter who relies on high-quality punches having a low punch output. Now, if you're not convinced by what took place during Bivol versus Canelo based on the eye test, just take a look at CompuBuck's final punch stats. What stands out the most? A. Saul Canelo Alvarez only landed a total 84 out of 495 punches during the entire fight with a 17% connect rate, which for a low volume fighter like Canelo is extremely inefficient. Whereas Dimitri Bivol landed 152 out of 710 punches with a 21% connect rate. B. Canelo landed just 10 jabs in the entire fight with a 4% connect rate, meaning Canelo's jab was not existent in the Bivol fight. Bivol, who as a boxer puncher relies heavily on the jab, scored 46 out of 418 jabs, effectively beating Canelo in this department also. C. Canelo Alvarez landed 74 power punches, connecting at just under 28%, which proves Canelo was trying to hit Dimitri Bivol pretty much with power punches exclusively. Maybe his mistake, he throw only hard punches. After hard punches, he relaxed and tired. Bivol, on the other hand, landed 106 out of 292 power punches, which is over one-third of his total power punches. That means Dimitri Bivol was the more accurate, doing the more damage of the two. So the judges made it look close. However, based on the eye test and certainly based on CompuBox final punch stats, Bivol versus Canelo was not close. And had this not been boxing's cash cow, Dimitri should have won by a landslide. Fact is, Canelo did get hit by some of Bivol's fast hands. The fact that he didn't go down shows how durable Canelo Alvarez is. Number four, weight divisions. Did he ever hurt you? Yeah, my arm. <laughs> hurt my arm. I, I can keep my belt now. Please. Which proves Saul Canelo Alvarez did do some damage against Dimitri Bivo, albeit without any satisfying results. Although the Mexican pound for pound great has proven to be a potent puncher in the past, Dimitri Bivo already showcased his durability as a 25 pro boxer. In fact, the WBA light heavyweight world champion has taken little to no damage in his pro career so far. And when he did take a shot a few years back, Bivo recuperated fairly quickly. Conventional wisdom would declare that if Bivo could take a punch from a bigger man who is a legit 175 pounder and a current world champion then taking a punch from a naturally smaller man who's moving up in weight isn't going to be that big of a deal and clearly Dimitri Bivo was the fresher man in the 12th round unlike his Mexican opponent so again credit to team Canelo for seeking greatness for their man testing his skills and faith outside his natural weight class that said team Canelo has to consider their next moves carefully Dimitri Bivo looked fresh as a daisy and if that rematch would happen next he knows he can beat Saul Canelo Alvarez. Every fighter has a ceiling, even a pound for pound level great such as Canelo, and he might just hit his ceiling at light heavyweight knowing that he has held a title in this weight class before. And so in my opinion, an immediate rematch against Dimitri Bivo will end up in the same fashion. Maybe the pride is damaged, maybe wisdom should prevail and make the sensible decision by moving down to his optimal weight class at 168 pounds. Number five, what's next? 
even with a loss, Canelo Alvarez can still defend his titles at 168. There's always that big money fight with rival Gennady Golovkin. Since Triple G just came off a stoppage win in a successful world title unification match and Canelo took a loss, the public opinion may sway towards a 50-50 fight, which in my estimation makes the Canelo Golovkin trilogy not only the biggest fight, but also the fight that makes the most sense for Canelo Alvarez just from a practical perspective of getting back in the winner's column. The likes of David Benavides and Jamal Charlo are still talked about yet are still unproven and untested especially at the elite level. Or if the rematch with Dimitri Bivol does not come to fruition, what are the odds Canelo fancies his chances against Ilunga Mahabu for the WBC Cruiserweight Championship of the World? No matter which opponent Team Canelo chooses next, Canelo is still the current undisputed king at 168 and will still do great numbers regardless of his loss to Dimitri Bivo. As for the WBA Super 175 World Champion, apart from a second fight with Canelo, which will give Bivo payday, you want payday. There is the ultimate consolidation to consider at 175. And coming fresh off a win over the pound for pound best in the world, having established himself as the second best light heavyweight with a win over WBO champion Joe Smith Jr., that leaves fellow Russian Artur Beterbiev, who holds the majority of the light heavyweight world titles, especially if he successfully unifies against Joe Smith Jr. Stylistically, Beter Biev versus Bivo is a match made in heaven between two undefeated world champions from Russia. One is a relentless yet intelligent pressure fighter having won all of his 17 professional fights by knockout, who is up in age, has been floored a few times, yet who offers fireworks every single time he steps into the ring. The other is a classic boxer puncher who controls the range with a deadly accurate jab, who moves elegantly yet efficiently and has proven his technical and tactical brilliance against arguably the best fighter in the world pound for pound. By the way, if you want to see a potential Beterbiev versus Bivo matchup, let's get today's episode to 350 likes and we'll get you to see that video here on Ringside Stories ASAP. Props to Canelo Alvarez for taking a chance and battling a formidable opponent outside of his preferred weight class. Congratulations to Dimitri Bivo for a great performance and a career-defining win. These are just my observations, my five takeaways from Dimitri Bivo versus Saul Canelo Alvarez. What are yours? Who do you like to see both fighters in with next? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoy this kind of content and you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe, give a thumbs up and hit that notification bell. It helps the channel out a lot, i.e. inspire us to make more quality content for y'all. As always, thanks so much for your support in advance and welcome to Ringside Stories. Now, if you've done that already, you're amazing. We already know that you are the true undisputed world champion. Till next time, Ringsiders, this is your host, Boxing's Objective Observer with Ringside Stories. Thanks for watching and have a legendary day.